full tilt poker bribes. Directly related to the Jeremy Johnson hush money bribery scheme was the parallel full tilt poker scandal. This is where the web of backroom bribe taking by Harry Reid shows how many onion layers of corruption exist. A well-known poker player and entrepreneur, Chad Ely, confessed a revealing amount of information relating to the sordid Jeremy Johnson fraud empire, the poker industry, and also the connections to one Senator Harry Reid. Ely had partnered with Jeremy Johnson in providing credit processing facilities through Utah's Sun First Bank. In part two of an interview with Poker News, Ely discussed how his former partner, Jeremy Johnson, stole from online poker operators and why Ely had ris taken the risk of processing poker transactions in the, in the United States. Earlier you mentioned the name Jeremy Johnson. It's, it's a name that's come up a bit in the industry. Can you tell me a little bit more about Jeremy Johnson? Yeah, he was my uh, former partner for Elite Debit. And, um, you know, and we processed uh, through Sunfirst Bank. He helped me set up the solution to Sunfirst Bank. Um, and we processed for Full Tilt and Poker Stars for about a year. And, um, and then he stole, I think, roughly around, I think, 20 or $30 million from Full Tilt and Poker Stars at the collapse of Sunfirst and uh, money for myself as well. Was, were you working with Jeremy? Was it your company that, was, that had technically stolen from Full Tilt and Poker Stars? Or? No, I mean, well, we created Elite Debit, um, which was Elite Debit California. Um, and for the, I think that was in November of 2009. And then um, early 2010, he had created an Elite Debit in, in Utah. So he slowly took away everything from me. Um, and also brought in the Valve brothers, uh, Jason Valve and Todd Valve as the accountants for Full Tilt and Poker Stars. And um, that's where he um, was really able to set up the scheme and, and funnel the money uh, through that. I mean, since then, I, I believe Todd Vowell got indicted for, uh, or just pled guilty to um, conspiracy to move 100 tons or 1,000 tons of marijuana from Utah to Tampa. Um, so, I mean, he, he put these people in, in there um, and the money disappeared uh, around October of 2010. So, was that money, to your knowledge, recovered at all by Full Tilt or Poker I Stars? Think, I think there was a little money reco uh, recovered by Poker Stars, um, but no, the rest of it. I mean, I'm talking about a couple million was recovered. Other than that, the FTC, uh, I think, has most of it. He seemed to continue working in the industry. I mean, and you act you posted a photo of him on your Twitter account with with Harry Reid. And there was reports that he was involved in allegedly bribing Harry Reid. Can you clarify or, or speak any further on that? I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know about. Uh, I mean, I know what Harry did with the poker industry. I mean, we were. Um, we was here at the Rio. We did the. Um, we all wrote checks. The Harry Reid's campaign. Howard Ray was there. Um, representatives from Poker Stars. Um, Harry came around, shook all our hands, talked to us for a little bit, um, asked us what we did. Um, you know, hey, I'm a processor for Poker Stars in Full Tilt. You know, I'm speaking to, what is he, the Senate, Senate uh, majority? And uh, I mean, how more transparent can you be? Was it, so this was post UIGEA? Yeah, this is uh, 2010. So this is at the, the WSOP 2010. Yeah. And so he, gave us this whole speech on how to, you know, make sure everything's transparent with poker and, um, uh, you know, as far as we need to have federal law that explains what a game of skill is and, and, and things like that. So Howard gave, actually gave a great speech during that. Um, he spoke the most, um, you know, during that meeting. So, but as far as, as Jeremy's concerned and his paying uh, Harry, I don't know, um, I mean, he tried to pay everyone, so. I don't know, uh, I don't have any knowledge. I know about uh, John Swallow. I know about um, the former attorney general. Um, so I know there was definitely a lot of money exchanged between the three of them, so. Money that was not going, uh, the, <laughs> yeah. not funneling through the proper channels. Correct, yeah. At least I, I could see, so. Interestingly, it was founded in 2008. Ely had opened a bank account falsely representing that it would be used for payday loans 
when it processed payments to poker stars. He also offered to invest millions of dollars in three failing banks, SunFirst Bank, All-American Bank, and New City Bank, in exchange for the bank's agreements to process internet poker transactions. All three banks were since closed by regulators. Ely continued processing even after legislation regulating online gambling the Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act of 2006 closed most online gambling doors. Ely was indicted along with 10 other men in April 15th of 2011 as part of what is known as the, in the poker industry as the Black Friday indictments. Although Ely fought the indictment based on his understanding that he would only be subject to potential civil penalties, he eventually pleaded guilty to conspiring to commit bank fraud and operating an illegal gambling business and served a five-month prison sentence. Ely also had this to say about Jeremy Johnson, quote, he was famous for paying people in cash, gold bullion, even poker chips, unquote. Ely says that during his interactions with J Johnson between 2009 and 2011, Johnson bragged about owning the Utah Attorney General's office. Ely says that Johnson was shrewd in the ways he's invested in the campaigns of for example, former Attorney General Mark Shurtleff, who over the years received more than $200,000 from Johnson, his companies, family, friends, and associates. Ely says Johnson told him that he would collect donations from his business associates for Shurtleff's campaign and then simply pay them back with his own money. Was Reed's lucky star, the one that allows him to perpetually avoid bribery charges, again left untainted by those running the highly lucrative poker cashing industry? As always, the answer is unlikely, but the idea that Reed had zero involvement with the industry is countered by a robot telephone campaign during the 2010 election by well-known poker player Howard Lutterer on Reed's behalf, as recounted by poker analyst Michael Jackets. Quote, phone call from Howard Lutterer. I got a phone call from Howard Lutterer today asking me to vote for Harry Reed, the incumbent Democrat senator in Nevada. Well, it wasn't really a phone call directly from Howard. It was one of those pre-recorded messages. Howard went on to say that Harry Reid is a friend to online poker and that I should vote for him. He pledges that Harry will fight for my right to be able to play online poker." Unquote. So it appears Jeremy Johnson was playing to influence the Reid political empire through two paths, through the poker and online gaming industry and through his connections to Rawl at Czech City and the check cashing industry. Of course, both these industries are the heir apparent to the old bookmaking and loan sharking industries the mob used to exclusively corner, so it is no surprise that Jay Brown had ended up as a lobbyist for the check cashing industry after having represented casinos, Indian gaming, titty bars, marijuana, and various other dubious entities. Both Utah attorneys generals and friends of Jeremy Johnson, John Shirtliff and John Swallow, have been tried and have since acquitted. Sadly, their acquittal is likely more through incompetence of the FBI and departments of justice agents running the cases, combined with a political cover-up, than that they were innocent. Questions have also been raised about current Attorney General Sean Reyes and why a grand jury to hold Jay Brown and Harry Reid accountable has been perpetually delayed. In a parallel universe of corruption, it seems only Jeremy Johnson is to be held accountable, as though, as though he was operating alone in a vacuum. 